this time welcome everybody who's here. Uh, we're almost at 30 people will be chatting on in. Uh, keep yourself uh, muted. Uh, we'll be um, having question and answer uh, at the end of the session here. So um, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker. You can see her, she's up on my upper right, Dr. Tracy Farone. Um, she has graduated from The Ohio State University in 1999 veterinary school. Where'd you go to undergraduate? St. Vincent College in Latrobe. Oh, okay. Or Latrobe, if you're from that area. Very uh, after that, she uh, did a lot of private practice for 12 years. Was that with small animals, large animals, or flying animals? I did a little bit of everybody, yeah. Okay, very good. Um, actually, just in 2016, you got interested in beekeeping. I read uh, some of the bio and what you sent um, that you went to France, did some um, research there or studying or observation there. Um, do you mind being called the bee vet? Uh, I think that's just been given to me, whether I liked it or not. <laughs> yeah, multiple, multiple people have kind of tagged me with that. So, okay. Um, if I guess I'm going that, with it. If you get bee culture, she does. Uh, this will be the fourth article. It's been pretty interesting. She's a contributor to bee culture. Uh, she's known as the bee vet. She's going to be talking to us about a topic that we often take for granted but uh, I think we're more aware of it and we need to be more aware, aware of it considering that our bees are considered to be livestock. So our topic today is biosecurity. And so I'd like to welcome again, Dr. Tracy and you're on. All right, so biosecurity is something that, uh, you know, veterinarians, there's, trust me, volumes and volumes and manuals written on this uh, topic for all different types of uh, species, particularly when it's agricultural species. And I, I really think, um, you know, nowadays with, with everything that's going on with COVID, I think everybody's becoming a public health specialist in some way or another. Uh, but biosecurity, you know, this is a topic that I was actually asked to get involved in at the very beginning of the year um, before COVID. If you guys remember the days before COVID, that was actually in January of 2020. Uh, and I was actually asked to write uh, biosecurity guidelines for veterinarians going into bee yards. So um, I actually got involved with the Honeybee Veterinary Consortium to write uh, guidelines for the industry for veterinarians. Uh, so those are actually published on a veterinary website. Uh, and then I was asked um, to start writing for some bee culture. So I wrote uh, an article on biosecurity for beekeepers. And, and in talking with some beekeepers and also talking with some entomologists, they said, you know, this is an area that really biosecurity, we, we do it somewhat, but we don't talk about it so much in, in uh, apiculture and maybe we should. So, you know, this was pre, pre COVID, believe it or not, the origins of this. Uh, and it's something that I'd like to kind of discuss and, and just go over some things with you guys. So there's a couple questions and Ken wants to make this interactive and I think that's awesome. So a couple questions that I wanna just throw at you at the beginning here. So you guys can, I think, choose those and we'll take a poll and see where you're at on these questions. Oh, we're giving you 30 seconds for this. We're at uh, okay. We're have some music. Hopefully I already gave you the answers, maybe. Do, 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 do. So biosecurity protocols are commonly utilized in agriculture animals. Number one, that is true. It looks like most of you guys got that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult. I don't know if any of you have ever visited an industrial, especially industrial farms and a hog farm uh, or a chicken farm. Uh, you really have to uh, go through a lot of biosecurity before you can actually even be on that farm. Um, and then, uh, yeah, number two, biosecurity can be employed by backyard beekeepers. Yes, and that's the whole reason why uh, we're doing that, this talk tonight. So all these pictures, by the way, that I have on here are all pictures of, of my bees. Uh, most of them were taken up in the uh, Grove City Apiary. All right, so a little bit about, more about biosecurity. So the definition of it, and this is, is kind of the, you know, more technical definition of it is it's for, uh, protective protocols, 
uh, utilized to prevent disease. And a lot of times people think of biosecurity as just protecting against disease, and that, that is absolutely true. But it's also chemical, physical, and any other health threat from entering or leaving a group of people, by the way, we use a lot of biosecurity with, with human beings, um, or um, animals. So it's, it's not just disease itself, but also um, some of these other things that could come into an area and create a health threat. So it really encompasses a lot of things that, that we can be evaluating. So it prevents this spread of disease. Okay, and then you know, what would be another health threat? Well, um, a bear coming into your bee yard could be an example of certainly a health threat for your, your bees. And there's things that certainly you can do to try to prevent that, like putting up an electric fence, for example. You know, can you keep everything out of your yard? No, but you certainly can assess whether you're in a risk area or if that's a real risk for you and then take certain steps to try to prevent those risks or reduce those risks and those threats. So again, they are developed. Uh, again, manuals, I'm not going to bore you on this. Uh, like I said, I wrote a, uh, a bit of a guidance for the industry for uh, veterinarians in, in bee uh, yards and apiculture and veterinarians entering bee yards from a veterinary perspective. Uh, you know, it's probably not a, uh, a fast read, you know, something that you'd want to pick up and read on the bus, but uh, it's, it's certainly helpful when it's an area that really wasn't touched much in, in the United States. So it was an area that we really needed to look into. And I think it's an area that uh, is becoming more popular uh, with beekeepers and with, with veterinarians. I uh, heard through the grapevine after I put up some of my articles that there was other articles that, that came out uh, with, with other authors uh, in the American Bee Journal and such. So certainly a topic, a timely topic that's seems to be getting some more attention uh, right now. Well, it looks like just about everybody picked everything. Um, most popular was not allowed, and I, I'm, I'm proud of you guys for getting this one. Um, unknown equipment into your apiary. That's certainly a way to bring disease and whatever else, other pests into your, your apiary. But uh, one thing, uh, the top one there about designated hive tool for each bee yard. If you are working in a bee yard, you know, the thing that kind of goes in each one of your hives is your hive tool, you know, it, it's everywhere. And it's, it's a relatively cheap item, you know. And uh, one thing when I talk to people about biosecurity, they're like, oh, I don't, you know, I've got to change all of these things or it can be a costly thing. And it's like, well, you, know, you probably have a couple hive tools laying around anyway. And if you have just one yard, then, you know, okay, one hive tool or so is fine. But if you're Going to different yards, uh, it's not a bad idea just to invest in that, you know, that one other hive tool and have it be designated for that yard. And the same thing if you bring people into your yard. So say you have other beekeepers over or there's, uh, you have an open house, so you try to help each other out. Try to keep the hive tools for that yard in that yard. You know, everybody likes to have their own hive tool, but um, try to utilize what's there. That way you'll keep what's in that yard in that yard and it won't be moved back and forth. Uh, pesticides, yeah, again, uh, some people think biosecurity is just about uh, diseases and bacteria, viruses and parasites and things, but um, pesticides, chemical threats are actually considered to be part of biosecurity too. And if we can limit those uh, in our area, you know, certainly, unfortunately we can't prevent pesticides 100%, but we can certainly try to limit them in our area the best of our ability. And yeah, even the use of an electric fence to keep uh, different pests out of your yard, uh, primarily bears. I know I have bears in my area. Biosecurity protocols, if you look into it, and I'm gonna give you guys some references at the end of this, this lecture here, uh, really throughout the world, uh, apiary biosecurity protocols are fairly developed. Um, certainly in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, uh, much of Europe, uh, apiary biosecurity protocols are really more of the rule than the exception. So um, there's many areas of the world where biosecurity is, is certainly not a new concept. But in the U.S., we do have some, some room to look into this topic. You did go to France. I know you studied. Was that more of observation when you went to France to look at these different vet schools? 
Uh, it, it was it was partly our observation. It was partly going into the field with them. Uh, they took me all over France. Uh, I was on one side of the industry to the other, everything from honey making to the wax making uh, to the schools. Uh, all of their veterinary schools have apiaries over there. That's just a normal thing. Yeah. All right, so good job. You guys are, are listening. Yeah, um, Canada, France, New Zealand, they all have pretty well laid out biosecurity guidelines for their BA.